Welcome, Joel. Are you ready? Yes. Question. How many of you have ever been in a taxi cab? Let me see your hands. All right, hands. Anybody not been in a taxi cab? One, two, three people. Okay. Have you ever seen a movie where there's a taxi in there? You kind of understand the process? Good. Okay. That all right with you? Sometimes a very ordinary experience can create an extraordinary event that can literally change your life. Come with me as my invisible partner, January 2nd, 1980, Memphis, Tennessee Airport. We just got off an American Airlines jet, picked up the two bags. You're standing there with me as my invisible partner, waiting for a taxi cab to take us to the hotel. No taxis. A guy comes running up with a little radio in his hand. He says, you need a cab. And I said, yeah. He said, okay, guy at America looks like he's in a hurry to get here quick. He said, we don't keep our taxis out front. We put them in the back so we don't tie up congestion here. He'll be here in a moment, and he kind of points that way. So you and I turn, and we look that way. A moment later, a taxi rounds the bend and heads towards us. The closer it gets, the worse it looks. It's all beat up. Now, I'm thinking, I've been a good boy all day. Why this taxi? And you think the same thing. And as the car comes to a stop in front of us, suddenly the driver's door opens and this guy leaps out. He doesn't step out. He, like, flies right out of the front seat. He released the trunk from inside. The trunk lid's going up, puts his hand on the lid, looks at us and says, are these your bags? Well, somewhat taken aback by that whole experience, I said, well, yeah, there's nobody else standing there. And the bags are right here next to my feet. I said, yeah, these are my bags. Well, he's a skinny little guy, picks up the heavy bags, puts them in the trunk gently, slams the trunk down, runs over to the passenger door, and opens it like we're getting into a limousine. <laughs> and suddenly, that negative first impression disappears. Beautiful new carpet on the floor. Spotless, Naga hide seat covers. The passenger seat next to the driver is pulled all the way in the forward position, so there's maximum legroom in the back. And as we slide in, he closes the door, runs around to his side, leaps into the car, pulls away from the pickup area, puts the car in park, turns around and says, my name is Willie Cooley and yours. Well, again, somewhat taken aback, I said, Joel Weldon. He said, Mr. Weldon, welcome to Memphis. And he shakes my hand harder. Is this your first trip to our fair city? I said, yes, it is. He said, welcome again. Now, let me stop the story. Does this sound like the cab drivers everybody in this room has experienced except for the three people? Is this a little different? Yeah. It's extraordinary. But that's just the beginning. He then looks at me and he says, Mr. Weldon, May I ask you a question? I said, yeah, Willie, what do you want to know? He said, where are we going? <laughs> now, we said this is a sales seminar. Is that a good question to ask? Where are we going? Absolutely. How many times do we not find out where our customers want to go? I said, I'm going to the Hyatt Regency Hotel. He said, I know exactly where it is. Looked at his watch. It'll take us 20 to 25 minutes based on traffic. Do you need to work, or can we talk? <laughs> now, let me stop the story a moment. Where are we going today? Let's take a look at your agenda sheet. It says our objectives, to share with you as a sales professional specific ideas, selling concepts, this is right on the cover sheet, and sales techniques that will help you to, number one, take your sales skills and your professionalism to the next level. Realize the impact that you can have on your prospects and customers. And number three, to focus on the little things, and we're going to give you 12 of them, that most salespeople miss. And the end result of this program should have you feeling good about yourself, your selling future, being a participant in this seminar, and most of all, thrilled to be a sales professional and having fun and laughing a lot. Now, speaking about laughing a lot, do we have any sales managers in our seminar today. Any sales manager, raise their hands. 
Okay, I see we've got a bunch of sales. How many of you have a sales manager? Okay, that's about 50% of you. How many know what a sales manager is? Okay, they manage salespeople. Well, early this morning, if you had one, your sales manager goes for a walk, does a little jogging, because sales managers stay in great shape, and as they're out on this run, he finds an old jar sticking up out of the ground. And being an inquisitive person, sales managers are, he digs the jar out, removes the lid, and suddenly, a genie appears and says, I will grant you one wish, and one wish only. Well, being a sales manager, quick on his feet, reaches into his coat pocket, pulls out a map of the world, unfolds it for the genie, and he says, genie, I want world peace. I want world peace for all 229 nations on earth, even knows how many countries. All the genie says, I'm the most powerful genie that's ever lived. I can do almost anything. That's a tough assignment, even for me. How about I give you three simple wishes that you can tell your salespeople that came to Joel Weldon sales seminar going this afternoon. When they come back to work tomorrow, you can give them these three wishes. He looks at the genie, says, make it four. I'll take up on the deal. Sales managers are always negotiating up. Have you noticed that? I happen to have a copy of the four wishes that you're going to hear tomorrow if you've got a sales manager. Number one, he says to the genie, I want to be able to tell all my salespeople their income is going to triple. Does that sound good? Yeah. Number two, the only objection they're ever going to hear is, is that all it costs? <laughs> Number three, every prospect will call them demanding an appointment they'll never have to prospect again. And for our next sales meeting, we're going to meet in Maui, Hawaii. We're going to go there for two weeks. We're going to fly everybody there and their family. will pay for first-class airfare. Yeah. To which the genie says to the sales manager, let me see that map of the world again. <laughs> now, you know that never happened. I made that up. First of all, I don't know your sales manager. Some of you don't even have a sales manager. But that's not why you know I made that up. You know I made it up because you're all smart enough to know there are no genies. Everybody clear on that? There's also no magic formulas. There's no secrets to success. There's no shortcuts. There's no silver bullets to make your dreams come true. That, my friends, is up to you. And I don't have any magic for you, but we do have some very practical, realistic ideas that you can use. How many would feel good if you got one idea in this seminar that you could use by tomorrow that would work for you? How many would feel good about your time today? then that's our goal. One little practical idea. Now, look below at our premises. We've got three premises for today's program. Almost everyone sells. You sell yourself, you sell your ideas, and you sell that you care. And it says under caring, selling is helping. That's all it really is. Maybe underline that part. Emphasize that for yourself for start. Selling is helping. Even our Memphis taxi driver, was in sales. Number two, since selling is a learned skill, let me stop on that. I know it's a learned skill. Because if anybody ever told me I could sell anything, I'd say that's impossible. But selling is like water skiing, playing golf, playing tennis, riding a bicycle. You learn to do it. Yes, there are some people more gifted at communication skills or being comfortable with strangers, but the skills of selling can be learned. And as good as you are now, you can get even better. And if you're just beginning, don't worry. You can learn. I know, because that's where I was. And it says, since it's a learned skill, one of the best ways to learn is when you are the customer. When you are the customer, you know exactly what you are thinking. B, under number two, is you can judge the impact on you of what the salesperson is saying, which leads to number three, study salespeople who sell you. Study people that you go out and meet that are trying to get you to invest in something. And look for the good and the bad. Look at the cartoon that's in the caption at the bottom, right? We all know it's true that selling is a science and it's a relationship business. People buy from people. People buy more from people they like. And people buy a lot more from people they like a lot. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Do the free premises make sense to you? Yeah. Well. If selling is a learned skill, what do you need to learn? Now, Michael told you in the introduction about my background. And when I heard that I was going to be hired,